Welcome to The Shift Show with Adriana Bucci. Join me every week to learn all about narcissistic abuse recovery, healing from physical and emotional pain after the abuse, and everything else to do with toxic people and how they affect your physical, emotional, and mental health. And no, you are not the crazy one. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. Let's get right to it. Welcome to episode number three of The Shift Show. Today, I'm going to be talking about how to deal with a narcissist. So if you've read anything about how to deal with a narcissist online, you've probably seen a lot about going no contact. And I'm here to say that that's absolutely correct. Going no contact is the absolute best way to deal with a narcissist in general. However, it's not always practical or possible all of the time. So I'm going to have five steps. The fifth step will obviously be the no contact step, but I have four steps to lead up to the no contact step. And just a quick disclaimer, if you are in a situation where you're in physical harm, your safety is compromised, or you're receiving death threats, this is a larger issue. You need to get out, call 911, get law enforcement involved, go to a shelter, stay with a friend, do whatever you need to do to get out of harm's way. My tips are not going to help you if you are physically in any danger with an abusive person. This is all about emotional abuse and how to deal with a narcissist who is emotionally abusing you. If it has escalated into physical abuse, you need to take action and get some sort of legal action involved because this is not something that I am able or equipped to help you with. So without further ado, let's get started. So step number one would be simply accepting them for who they are and that they will not change. When someone's emotionally manipulating you, it's really hard to wrap your head around the fact that this person is the way that they are. Narcissists are master manipulators, so it can be extremely confusing when you know that this person is not someone you should have in your life because they continue to mentally and emotionally destroy you at every chance that they get because there's times when they can be absolute angels and they can be great people and that is all part of their manipulation tactics. If you think about it this way, if the narcissist was terrible every single day, every single interaction that you had, after every fight you had, they never tried to make things right with you and it was just all around abusive 24-7, 365, it would be a no-brainer that this person needs to not be in your life. However, narcissists are master manipulators. So they can sense when you're ready to pull away and that's when they start their manipulation tactics. They'll start being an absolute sweetheart to you. They'll start doing favors for you. They'll start doing stuff for you and using guilt to motivate you to stay in contact with them. So it's important to recognize that this is a manipulation tactic. And it's important to recognize that this is who these people are. It doesn't mean that you should accept their crap and be okay with being treated like crap just because this is who they are as a foundation of a human being it's really not acceptable and not okay that this is how they are. Deep down, narcissists rarely have any desire to change because they feel that they're superior. And this is a reflection of their own psyche, of their own feelings about themselves. It could be related to childhood trauma and it could not. If you have gone through your own childhood trauma and you know that you would never want to put someone through something like that again, then that's the difference between a survivor of narcissistic abuse and an actual narcissist. So what makes a survivor of the abuse so different from the narcissist when a narcissist is completely okay with emotionally, mentally destroying somebody else for their own need for narcissistic supply? So just because it's potentially linked to some sort of trauma that they went through, it does not mean that you should accept their crap and be okay with being treated like crap just because they also went through some hard things in their life. It's absolutely not acceptable and not okay, and you shouldn't feel sorry for them just because it's possible that they went through something as well, which made them the way that they are. It's just some insight into why they are how they are, but that doesn't make it okay or acceptable. And another thing to remember is that it's not your fault that they're like this. 
and it's not your job or your responsibility to fix them. Narcissists thrive off of narcissistic supply. Narcissistic supply is your reaction to their antics. It's what they get from the people who engage with their antics. And once you accept this, you'll be able to take further steps to separate yourself from them. It's extremely confusing to deal with somebody who's like this. And that's all part of their game and all part of their manipulation. They want to make sure that you're so confused and not understanding who you are, what you know, and all that kind of stuff. Because they benefit from you being in a state of confusion because that means that they will continue to get some sort of narcissistic supply from you. Step number two is gray rocking. So this is one of my favorite methods on dealing with a narcissist. It's probably the best method that you could possibly use to deal with a narcissist. And it's the best way to deal with somebody who has narcissistic tendencies if no contact is not an option. So like the name suggests, you would become a gray rock. What does this mean? You embody the excitement and thrill of a gray rock. What do I mean? So first of all, let's examine what a gray rock is. It's a rock and it's gray and that's pretty boring. And that's how you're going to be boring. Be as boring as possible. It's how you're going to communicate with the narcissist if you're in a situation where you can't just cut them off right away. Be as boring as humanly possible. For example, if a narcissist asks you how your day was, you would just give a very boring response such as, my day was fine. And just leave it at that. Don't tell them about the drama from your day. Don't tell them even about the good stuff from your day because they thrive off of knowing if you had a bad day and if there was a good day, they'll find something from your good day to make it a bad day or they will make sure that your day doesn't continue being a good day. And this is why you gray rock. So keep your responses short, sweet, and to the point. Give as few details as possible. Change the subject. Do something else. Be less available. Give one-word answers. Change the topic to the weather or whatever else is extremely boring. And when in doubt, ask yourself, what would the most boring person on the earth say in response to what the narcissist is saying to me or asking me? Step number three kind of falls hand in hand with gray rocking, but step number three is don't engage. So this is when you haven't gray rocked or you tried to gray rock and they are just continuing to emotionally attack you and, for example, continuing to tell you what a piece of crap you are. Just agree with them and move on. I know it sounds very counterintuitive because our instincts is to defend ourselves, but imagine how stunned a narcissist would be if you responded to them with, yeah, you're right, I'm a piece of shit, and then that ended the conversation right there. Or, you know, yeah, you're right, the sky is red, what was I thinking, it's blue, cool. Anyways, moving on, next topic. Imagine how stunned the narcissist would be if you responded in this way rather than continuing trying to make your point to somebody who's not interested in hearing your point. Engaging and arguing with a narcissist will get you absolutely nowhere. It's important to remember that narcissists thrive off of conflict. They thrive off of causing drama. As wrong as they are with whatever it is they're saying, simply agreeing with them will shut them up pretty quickly or not engaging with them will stop the conversation pretty quickly. Step number four is to go low contact. So this is where you answer their calls less and less and this gets easier as time goes on. This is a little complicated when you live with the narcissist or work with the narcissist. So If you're in that kind of situation, just continue gray rocking as much as possible until you're able to remove yourself physically from their presence. 
if it's a situation where it's a job and you really like your job and you don't plan on leaving your job, gray rocking is a great method. But if you are in a situation where you're living with a narcissist and it's potentially a spouse, a significant other, a parent, an adult child, a sibling, whoever, and you live with this person, it will probably take you a while to, you know, get your affairs in order to be able to leave the situation altogether. So again, gray rocking is the way to go in that case. If you have the luxury of going low contact, then this is where the next step comes into play. So going low contact would be answering their calls less and less, and it gets easier as time goes on. At first, it's really scary to not answer them right away if that's what you're used to doing. If they have this expectation that you're just going to be available for them whenever they want you to be available for them and you're answering them, you know, five minutes later than you normally would, you will probably feel some sort of anxiety as you do this. And that's completely normal. So just keep in mind that that's totally normal. And just wait to text them back, wait to answer their calls, then change it and wait hours to message them back, and then days, and make less plans with them. And eventually, this gets you to go no contact at some point. And if you have successfully gray rocked the narcissist, this shouldn't come as too much of a shock to them, because chances are... They're in the process of looking for a new narcissistic supply from somebody else because now you've just become so boring because you've been gray rocking them for a while. Another thing to keep in mind if you are still living with a narcissist and you can't get out of there right now, make a plan to be able to leave at some point. So sometimes this means taking another job and being secretive about your income And about the fact that you have a second job so you can start actually saving up and being able to get out. Because a lot of the times, narcissists will financially abuse their victims and make it so that their victim is unable to make it on their own. So it's important to start thinking about a plan at least and acting on it. And keep in mind that it's okay if you're not able to make this plan right away because sometimes it can take a while. It can take, you know, years to save up for some people depending where exactly you live. So just be mindful of that and just continue to gray rock as much as possible. If you're able to leave your home more often so you're not under the same roof as the narcissist as much then that's great nurture your hobbies and continue to gray rock and do whatever you can to be home less and less and this is one of these this is one of those things that you might want to seek one-on-one help for and speaking to somebody who has been there because it can get really tricky and every situation is different and finally Step number five is to actually go no contact. This is the ultimate goal. Low contact eventually does turn into no contact if you have separated your living situation from the narcissist. At some point, the narcissist might even discard you once you've gone no contact because you're not fueling their their desire for drama at all. And in some cases, you need to keep very low contact for several years before you actually go no no contact. Um, It just really depends on your specific individual situation. And if low contact works for you, then that's great. If gray rocking works for you, then that's great. If you want to get the narcissist completely out of your life altogether, then no contact is definitely the way to go. And by following the previous four steps that I mentioned, this can help you lead into going no contact eventually. If you find yourself having gone from low contact back to enmeshment, continue repeating the steps and starting with gray rocking again. You can even start with the accepting them for who they are method to begin with because it's very easy to forget that 
they are who they are and that they're not going to change because it depends on how good they are at manipulating you. So I hope that this has been helpful. I hope this episode has been useful for anybody who is trying to figure out how to deal with a narcissist. If you have any questions or suggestions for future episodes, please feel free to reach out and send me an email at letsgetyourshifttogether at gmail.com. Otherwise, feel free to tune in next Wednesday for our next episode. We'll see you soon. Bye.